Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So this channel, Everyday Data Science, is all about trying to learn the different concepts involved in data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, I'm going to solve this question on lead code regarding rectangles area and try to walk you through how we can develop solutions to such problems. The difficulty level of this question is medium and this question has been asked in Twitter interviews over the past couple of years. Okay, so let's jump right in. We are given a table called points with three different columns, ID, X value and Y value. ID is the primary key for this table. Each point is represented as a 2D co coordinate, X value and the Y value. We are asked to write a SQL query to report all possible axis aligned rectangles with a non-zero area that can be formed by any two points from the points table. Okay, so that can be formed by any two points. So we are basically looking at a lot of combinations here, right? Each row in the result should contain three columns. P1, P2 and area where P1 and P2 are the IDs of the two points that determine the opposite corners of a rectangle. Area is the area of rectangle and must be non-zero. Okay. The result should be ordered by area in descending order. If there is a tie then in ascending order by P1 and if still tie exists then by P2 in ascending order. Let's go through this example, right? So in this case, we have three different points in 2d coordinate right so id 1 2 and 3 so 2 7 4 8 and 2 10 now we need to identify which of these will be you know able to form an uh, rectangle with zero area right so if you see this point right 2 7 and 4 8 so we need to look at okay so with this one and this one okay so obviously this can make a rectangle so 2 7 and 4 8 right so id 1 and 2 id 1 and 2 it can form a rectangle and how to calculate the area of a rectangle you you know length multiplied by breadth right so you calculate the length and multiply it by breadth and that is going to be the area now since there are three points we need to look at one two then we need to look at one three then we need to look at two three right so one three obviously one is this point and three is this point so it will form a rectangle with area zero right so obviously that should not be in the output and the second one is two three obviously two three can form an area of, can form a rectangles and obviously it is going to have some area and we calculate that area and it is by a descending order of area and if there would have been a tie then by p1 and p2 in ascending order right so that is what we need to do now if you look at this question so here since we have you know different points and we need to check all these points and all these combinations right and try to find out the area in such cases cross join is a very good example right so cross join if you have three three rows in one table and three rows in another table cross join is going to basically give you all the nine combinations that are possible right so here since obviously you know calculating an area of a point with itself does not make any sense because you know it is not going to form a rectangle or any shape and obviously the area is going to be zero right so we can filter out such cases as well right so that is going to reduce our number of combinations but yeah cross join seems to be one of the best ways to go here right so what we can do is since we have only the points table then we can you know alias this points table by two different names and cross join of the points table on itself right and try to calculate the area for of it right so let's start developing this so from this table called points aliased as p1 let's cross join the same table points but this time aliased as p2 and since cross join is you know will give you all the possible combinations so you don't need to write on clause in cross join right now let's return what let's return so obviously here if you can if you see right so this is the points table let's alias this as p1 and imagine another same table here which we are aliasing as p2 right so now let's uh, return the ids from uh, p1 as well as p2 right so p1 dot id and let's alias this as p1 p2 dot id and let's alias this as p2 and then calculate the area right so obviously this is one so this id equal to one and this is two comma seven is going to be 
one point and here again so if you cross join another here it would be 27 then 27 27 then 48 27 210 then for 48 27 48 48 right so this is what you are going to have with cross join now obviously what we need to do is we need to subtract the x value from p1 and p2 take the absolute value and then multiply it with the sub the difference between y values from p1 and p2 and that is what we are going to do so we write absolute value of p1 dot x value right so p1 dot x value minus p2 dot x value and then this is basically going to calculate one side of the rectangle and then you multiply it by absolute value of p1 dot y value minus p2 dot y value right and this is what is going to calculate the area right so let's alias this as area right obviously this is not complete but let me go ahead and run this and see like what we are getting and what we need to do to you know get the correct answer right so let me run this okay so here if you see we have three columns right and we made three columns p1 p2 and the area right so p1 p2 and area <coughs> and this is the id of the point one and two right so for three and one obviously if we see here right for three and one it is not going to form an rectangle and obviously the area is going to be zero right so it is returning zero for two and one so for two and one we are getting area two for one and one obviously with itself it is going to form a rectangle with area 0 similarly for 3 2 4 2 2 is 0 1 2 is 2 right so now here what we need to do is if you see here we have two things one we with uh, rectangles with area 0 and secondly there are repetitions right so obviously 2 1 and 1 2 so both are the same points right they are just written in different manner and obviously the area is going to be same right since here we have been mentioned that you know in case there is a tie in the area you us you know you need to have p1 in ascending order and then p2 in ascending order right so if we you know save this entire thing in a common table expression and keep only those rows where the area is not zero and your p1 id is less than p2 id so then that is going to take care of our duplicates like this right so 2 1 and 1 2 so since we are only keeping where p1 is less than p2 so this is not going to be in the uh, result right similarly if you see 3 2 and here you will be having 2 3 again the area is same but if we do you know p1 less than p2 can only be in the output then 3 2 4 this is going to be excluded right so let's do that so with so let's save this in a common table expression so with cte as right so here we have the common table expression put this entire thing in parentheses and now from this common table expression we are only keeping those rows where area is not equal to zero because that is what we need to do area must be non-zero and the p1 value or the p1 id should be less than the p2 one and why it is not p1 less than equal to p2 because p1 is equal to means like you are basically considering the same you know same point right because p1 and p2 remember these are the ids of those points so one and one basically this is the like same point right so obviously you do not need to take care of that because there the area is going to be zero right so that it is already being filtered out right so here once we have this then what we are going to do is we need to return since we already have all the three columns that we need in the output p1 p2 and area so you can you know return star and here the final thing that it's left to do is order by area in descending order and then p1 and p2 in ascending order so we write order by area in descending order then if there is a tie then by p1 and then by p2 right okay so this looks good let me go ahead and run this to see what happens okay so this is accepted our output is same as expected output and if you look at it right so we have only those rectangles where the areas is non-zero and you know we have you know there is no repetition as well right 
Okay, let me go ahead and submit it to see if it passes all the test cases. Okay, so this passes all the test cases and this is how we do it. Again, not a very difficult question. All we had to, you know, see, uh, know that, you know, how do we uh, are able to take care of all those combinations that we want to look at and then uh, like how to make sure that the area is not zero and there is no repetitions and we do that by applying the simple logic and we get the result as required right let me know if you know like a better way or a more efficient way of doing this or by doing it with a different kind of join right uh let me know in the comment section and until then i will see you guys in the next video